Adam Gebrian is a young architect and journalist who has a regular column in the newspaper Lidove Novini. So naturally, a tour of his Prague included stops at a couple of the city's most interesting contemporary buildings. But let's start today's show at what he considers the most vibrant spot in the Czech capital right now, the Na Plavka Riverside Walkway beneath the embankment Rashinovo Nabrzeži. Over a beer at A Void, a rusty old boat converted into a floating gallery with a great view, I put it to Adam that Na Plavka can at times be extremely crowded. I think now it's getting to the point when, uh, when it might be even too much. It's called this kind of like victim of its own success. And I think like we are exactly in this spot. And uh, I think the only way which could help is would, that there would be other attractive spaces that people will also go there. And I think it's happening. So yes, sometimes like especially during the, let's say warm nights, it's overcrowded. And, uh, and once you have to wait for beer for two or three minutes or 10 minutes, I think it's not really great. But let's say during the day like today, when it's around 20 degrees, 25 degrees, uh, I think it's so, so still. So it's crowded by, by local people people and they pass by, they cycle, they run, they, they just look, they, they pass by or they, and they sit. What kind of people come here? Probably that's the most interesting thing about this all, all story and it's I think all kind of people and uh, that I really like that's from super young to old to rich to poor uh, and all of them go to these terrible toilets and uh, all of them walk on this uh, not so good pavement and they have to interact. That's the role of a public space. It seems to me that it still isn't that well known. There are people who come here very often, but I know many people who've never been here and don't know anything about it. People who've been in Prague for years, maybe. That might be a more general story about Prague. I think there are many places which are not perfectly accessible. You know, if somebody would come from abroad, then he would uh, look at Prague's islands. He would say something like, wow, they are basically not accessible. Stvanice, Střelecký ostrov, it's hard to get in. But also that's the reason why they are still quality spaces. If they would be easily accessible, I think they would be immediately touristical spots and they would lose many of its like appeal. And this is similar in here, uh, even though we are exactly in the city center, there is no metro station nearby, yeah, for example. Uh, and uh, of course, like you can go by tram, but also we are a bit lower, we are separated by the wall. Sometimes you have to look for the closed staircase, so it, it takes like 200 meters to be able to get in. Uh, let's say the best garden in Prague is uh, Vojanovi Sady, and uh, its me- best quality is based on the fact that there's just one entry. And uh, if there would be like six of them, like in uh, Waldstein's Casa Herrera, then, then it's not interesting anymore. So I think in here we are in this kind of like tension of that it's accessible, but not such great access. Also, it seems to me that because it's a public space, it isn't just commercial with bars making money. People come here, they bring a few cans of beer, they bring nothing, they just sit. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, let's say the people who run bars and restaurants in here, or there are no restaurants based in bars, are people who are, uh, I think, very interesting and also produce a culture production in here. So for them, it's uh, they earn some money out of it but i think majority of it they invest back in this place so and you can see that so hopefully i don't know like but hopefully this is going to stay for a while so there is yet there is nobody who just like try to get as much money as possible and just uh, invest it somewhere else there's this you know couple of restaurants uh, close by the river uh, on the northern part of the Prague, which I think is one of the worst parts of Prague and, and you would never go there. So right now I think it's in, in pretty good balance and, and let's say, you know, for how long it's going to stay because like normally in every city it never stays. In, in a couple of years it's, it's going to get worse, I guess. Why do you think it's taken so long for this area to develop as it has? It's been here forever, Prague has been flourishing for many years in many ways. In places like this, it, it's in a way it's a big place, but once you look, uh, you know, like how many, like which parts could be commercially rented, they are very small. Uh, there are just like small holes in a in a kind of like this uh, pretty old wall, 
and uh, the size of each plot is something like from 25 to 50 square meters. So uh, if you look at it from a commercial point of view, uh, it's not very commercially attractive. And so these are kind of tunnels inside the embankment? Yes, yes. And uh, I think it, it needed somebody uh, who was not interested in the commercial profit. And uh, there are not so many people like this in Prague. And uh, somebody really thought, okay, this is a great place. You know, I'm not going to earn tons of money out of it, but I think it's an interesting spot. And if we work on it, it can be a really great public space. Let's say the luxury is not in a way that you've got a really big size room, but you are in an interesting spot. Myself and Adam Gebrian are standing outside Hotel Metropole, a designer hotel located at the city centre end of Narodny Street. Inside its sleek, open to the street cafe, my guide explains why he's chosen the location. It's one of my favourite spots because basically nobody ever goes here. It feels as a like you are in a luxurious, uh, beautifully designed, very expensive hotel. It's accessible to everybody and it's not really expensive. And I think I enjoy it, <laughs> basically nobody in here, and it's, uh, which is rare in the packed center. So if you are looking for oasis of no people and just sit in and have a cafe or beer, you can do it. Well, I've often passed here, but it never entered my head to come in. I understand and I think there are several reasons for that and uh, let's say one of them it really looks this kind of uh, uh, sleeky, um, luxurious but also cold and, uh, and uh, open and, uh, and uh, not kind of let's say romantically beautiful. Uh, but still, uh, yeah, so, and with also small details, it, it don't really invite you in. Even though there's a huge uh, fully glazed facade that you can lift up and there's really a direct connection, for example, I'll show you later that there's no height difference between the, uh, the pavement and the, and the interior, so it's really exactly the same level. So let's say the architect, in his mind, he did everything to invite people in, but it's not happening, so it's an interesting paradox. Also across the street from here is one of Prague's best-known buildings, Tesco, previously Mai. What's your view of that building? It's been an important building of Czech history because it's, I think it's been finished around 1975 and it's been done by good designers and architects and it's, built, it's been well constructed by the Swedish construction company uh, which was unique in that time and uh, I think there was an interesting concept which there's this escalator hall which, was, which is behind the building I think the previous idea was that the building is going to be doubled and this is going to be in between, but of course that never happened. So, but that means that there was this fully glazed uh, escalator hall, but right now it's gone because there's going to be new building next to it. So that's why they make it, uh, made it blind. So it's covered. And I think that building, because of the covering of this escalator hall, the building lost its main quality, which was there. Perhaps 10 minutes walk away from Hotel Metropole, just by the Staromestska metro station is Café Mistral, a spot with good, reasonably priced food and a bare but cool interior. But Adam Gebrian is the one who's the architecture journalist. I let him describe the place. We are in a surroundings or in an environment uh, which I really like, which means it's really simple. A bit of a Scandinavian way, so it's in two or three colors, two materials, so just concrete on the ground and uh, and it's like white wood and, uh, and white, or like not white, but grayish painting. And that's it. And uh, it's been done by a um, uh, young architect whose name is Yithis Hoth. And, uh, and I really enjoy it as a striking contrast to what it was before. Previously it was called Arsenal and it was designed by Boszek Sipek, who I guess was a big architect here in the 1990s. Yes, and uh, I'm hoping that we moved somewhere else uh, to some like different dimensions of architecture. And uh, we have two proofs for it, actually. This one is one and the other one is called Red Piff and it's also close by. It changed its owners and the owners uh, find different architects and those both architects decided that basically nothing gonna stay from the previous design. So in this case there are only the shopping windows and in other case it's just a door handle and everything else is uh, way, way more simpler. And I think that's how it should be because, uh, you know, like you... Probably, I don't think you should go to a restaurant because of how it looks inside. And in a way, it's neutral. 
and uh, this this is what I enjoy. And uh, we are so much surrounded by advertisement and all this stuff. And in here, I think it's kind of like calm. And uh, aren't there a few places like this in Prague now? For example, Pod Lipami. I know it's quite small, but it has a similar decor. Uh, there are places like this, and I think they are getting more and more. And uh, I think that's uh, kind of like. Uh, Let's say it's a more adult taste than it was before. I think uh, the 90s was a pretty direct reaction to what was before. So of course, like during communism, everything was gray and simple and uh, and made out of concrete panels. And of course, the natural reaction would be let's go for the opposite. Uh, let's say Hotel Hofmeister in Prague. So the late postmodernism. I think like it took us a while to understand that there are also like beauty in this simplicity, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's related to this apartment panel story buildings. There are a few tables in front here, and now that's extremely common in Prague. There are many places with outdoor seating, and I was even reading that some conservationists are against too many places opening with outdoor seating or just being outdoor places. Can a city have too many outdoor spots? In my mind, probably not. But let's say in Prague, uh, I bit of understand what is it about. Uh, because it's, I don't think it's necessarily about the amount of it, but uh, it's, its look. And especially in Prague's center, if you go around uh, the old town square, I think you're going to realize that some of these, uh, let's say, front gardens became almost buildings or like there are completely surrounded by plastic and basically are one, one story buildings. Basically there was never a, an attempt to regulate uh, how these things should look. There are some uh, uh, city laws which are in my mind highly co controversial, which are related to protection of blind people. So for example, it's almost uh, impossible to put just the chair on the ground or it's very difficult to just put chair on the ground. Usually you need to put it on an elevated plateau like seven or eight centimeters up. And then very often it's related to the handrails and so on and so on. And, uh, and you would, not exactly in the center, but also in Prague 6, you would see like incredible stuff, which looks like a huge fence protecting kettle or something like that. And I think that's something which should be uh, regulated. So it's not about the amount, but about its look and its presence. And basically, I think this and advertisement are two major issues which has been always neglect neglected in previous years. And now there is uh, higher awareness about the fact that there should be done something about it and not just left like for 